Is yoga for everybody? Yoga for, is for everybody. Everybody and everybody. Let's say somebody, somebody wants to come in. They want to take control of their lives. They want to reduce stress. They don't know where to start, but they, they think yoga is the avenue. Mm -hmm. what, what kind of advice would you just kind of say to them? Like, where should they start? But it's, it's interesting because I've just been doing what makes me happy and keeping me healthy and keeping my attitude and keeping my energy up. And it's affecting others in ways that I never, ever thought it would. All right, guys, welcome to Becoming a Better You podcast. Today, so we have my yoga instructor, Pam San Martino. So I'm actually really excited about this. One thing you probably don't know is that the only time that ever worked at my schedule was like a Thursday at 930. And so when I was looking for yoga classes, that was just the time slot. And I got you. And I really believe in like the universe bringing like like energies together. Um, so when I was coming here today, I was like, oh, I've known Pam for a couple of years. And then I was like, it's oh, been like seven it's been like seven years. That's crazy. Right? Um, I don't think I was as gray when you met me. But um, Or me. I you have no gray. <laughs> but I was thinking to myself, like, wow, like that's, I didn't think I was doing it that long. And I remember wanting to do, I was already a PT. I was already doing fitness classes, a martial artist. So like I was instructing people. There was one main reason, two main reasons why I wanted to start. Number one is I didn't want to always be the teacher, right? I just wanted to come somewhere where I was just like, I'm just going to do something, right? And um, the second was I just I knew from like lifting and from doing martial arts that like a lot I was stiff and like when you lift a lot of weights you're built for like stability versus mobility so like I, I wanted to make sure I kept my uh, my flexibility but it still took me like two years to actually like do it yeah. right because I didn't know like I remember yeah. coming in here and they were all very nice so we're at Rafa Studios in Yoga which is probably like the premier studio I would say yeah around. I think so uh, it's incredible. But I remember coming in, I didn't know what I was doing, and I checked in, and I just walked past the front desk, and I was like, I don't know where to go. I went to, like, the small room versus, like, the big room. Yep. Uh, and then I saw you. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. But um, I remember I had, I think Mary was in front of me for my first class. Yeah. And uh, I just copied her. So, But, it, <laughs> but it, it took me, like, two years to actually, like, take the initiative to do that, right? Why do you think that is? Why do I think that is? Well, because you did something. You're my something. yoga instructor. I completely I mean, you forgot just, it. You, you wanted to do, just to do something different. You just said it, the same thing. You wanted to keep yourself flexible with what you do. I mean, what about like how I felt when you walked in the room and you're a physical therapist? I don't think you knew that at first. I didn't know that at first. People thought I was a gymnast. Right. Probably, yeah. They said that. He's a gymnast. I yeah, know. gymnast. Okay. A big weightlifter <laughs> guy. And then when I found out that you were a physical therapist, you're like, oh, you know, because... I'm more of a creative person when it comes to planning my classes with flow and stuff. You know, I, when I discuss uh, ligaments and stuff, I'm, I call them ropes and pulleys. Which for you crying should. out loud. Okay, which thank you. you. Which I should. Thank yeah. you. But it's, you know, it's humbling to even have someone with, with your background there. But I don't know why it took you so long to find yoga. Well, I was even thinking that, like, if someone like me, I'm already established in the fitness world. Mm -hmm. And it still took me two years to do it. Then somebody who has no idea or like doesn't even know what to do they probably never stop right you and know. you didn't know how to like slow down because your personality is similar to mine where you go 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 right and i think that's why we both have a little, little cough right now right yeah a little, yeah a little ragged. <laughs> um so that's kind of my story of how i got started in yoga so how did you get started in yoga i got started in yoga for i was staying over my kids. Oh my God, it was 19, oh, 22 years ago when I took maybe my first class. I was staying at my girlfriend's house and our kids were tiny and we shared a babysitter and we went out, we're out drinking all night. And the next morning, she's like, going to hot yoga. I'm like, what's that? She threw some clothes at me and we went to Rafa Yoga in, in um, North Kingstown. I had no idea what I stepped into. I was in a straddle fold and I tripped and fell and was giggling I was, was trying. Still drunk. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't tell me it was an hour and a half. She didn't tell me that it was heated. She didn't tell me that there's like no talking in there. But I never left. 
I was just so curious because my mind is always go, go, go. So I really started it for the workout. I stumbled into it by accident. Do you think it was an accident or you think you attracted it? I think I attracted it because as my mother would say, I'm a totally different person now that I've discovered yoga. How so? I'm more grounded. I, I insert like more of a pause in my life, which I say to you guys a lot in class. Like if you just pause and just feel and be, and it just completely fixed my anxiety. No, not completely, but you know, I mean, even back when I was a little kid, there was no such thing as labeling someone with anxiety. But growing up, I look back at it now and I was like, wow, I was such an anxious kid. And I, of course, still struggle with anxiety, even being a yoga teacher last Thursday, for instance. But um, <laughs> You're fine. fine. What she's referring to <laughs> is the fact that she kind of messed up the flow. But nobody cared because everyone loves her. So we were like, fine, that's, you can do whatever you want. We're going to do whatever you say. Oh, yeah. uh, but she was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, yeah so I think that it's, it really slowed me down. It started to ground me more where I was able to even appreciate everything around me. And even being as a parent, I was able to then learn different ways to handle my children growing up. And that was like, God, so many years ago. And that's, I think that it's completely changed me with that. So you what made you stick then, right? Because you went on a whim, your friend took you to yoga. Mm. Because I know for me, like, yeah, it's, it's, there's definitely some days like I got so much to do, but mm -hmm. I was like, no, it does grab me. Right. It, does. It, it definitely does that for me as well. Um, what made you stick with it? Like after the first class, you were just like, yes. It was, um, it was a form of meditation. It was a way to slow my mind down. It, it just, it just maybe brought me more back to being me. And I, I don't know. I think I just fell in love with it, with that. And I just started to go more often. Do you feel like it centered you? Completely centered me. Yeah. Completely. So when I when my daughter was five, I left work. Worked two streets over at Ross Simons as an assistant art director. And I left work and I was at home and I was doing some, you know, just some freelance work. But I needed more. And I needed a way to like pay for my gym membership and stuff being a stay at home mom. So I was at the YMCA teaching and they asked me if I wanted to do a yoga training. It's like, okay, I'll do that. Well, Get a free membership. At the YMCA? Yoga. Oh, oh I was, so I was teaching step and um, kickboxing. Okay. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm. We should talk later. Mm. <laughs> I think that's how I hurt my back. Okay. We'll talk about that. <laughs> and so I, I became a yoga teacher there. And then after that, uh, Christine, I was going to Rafa again continuously. Who's the owner of Rafa? Who's the owner? Owner. And she's like, why don't you come and work here? So I started working here with just my one weekend training with Yoga Fit. Just such a very, very small training. It's mostly used for gym yoga. And then from there, she was like, hey, you know, uh, you should um, do this uh, advanced forced yoga teacher training. I'm like, okay, I don't even have my 200 yet. But I'll go do my advanced yoga teacher training with Anna Forrest, who's world known. So I did that. And then after that, I did my 200 with Yoga Fit, um, not Yoga Fit, Yoga um, Yoga Works, which is a huge um, place. It's all over the country. It started in California. So I did, went backwards. And then after my 200, I continued with Raghunath Kapo, which is such an interesting man. He was a pop rock singer. Okay. A monk <laughs> turned yogi. Okay. I can see the path. <laughs> so cool. And, you know, it just, it just completely changed my life. I met a lot of people through the experience. I've been here now for 19 years, teach, teaching for 19 years. I've been at Rafa for about 22 years. I feel blessed. You know, and that's even something that my boss would say, Christine, because I was just talking to her earlier and like, you know, I just feel really blessed that I'm here. You know, it's I love the people. I love my students. Yeah, I think you're like, and I think one of the things that, you no, know, I know one of the things that made me stay was like your personality because I've had other teachers and other things, right? And 
when I first came to your class, I was like, she has it. Like, she has that warmth. She cares about her, her students. Uh, she's endearing, right? So you just want to go to her class. And I've had other Aww. instructors, even yoga instructors, where I was like, the class was good, but it misses that element. Oh, you know, smart. yeah, it's, no, it's cool. definitely true. It's the same thing we try to bring into like our studio where like you're interacting with the students, you're mm -hmm. saying their names, like you're coming around. Uh, I remember before COVID, you'd come around and like fix people's poses. Oh, right? I miss that. Yeah, and Today was the first day since before that. I actually, when I was sitting on the stage, I wanted to get off the stage so bad and walk around and give people Shavasana assists, but it's still a funny world out there. Sure. And you don't know who's, who's yeah. okay with whatever. Um, so you've been doing it for almost 20 years. Mm. I'll be at the 20 year party, right? For you, uh, when, when you, when you plan it, but, uh, is yoga for everybody? Yoga for, is for everybody, everybody and everybody, right? Right. You hear that little phrase a lot, everybody and everybody. It is so true because, uh, like even I was just talking to you before we started that I've been going to the North Kingstown free library. And I had last night, um, I had one woman that does yoga a lot. Her poses are perfect. And then I had two elderly people that have never done it before. And I told them the hardest thing about yoga is just walking in the door. Which I understand. Which it took me two years. Yes. <laughs> right. Yes. I, same thing. Yoga to me was too slow. I needed to run. I needed to run. And when I was told I couldn't run anymore, it was like, okay, this, this is it. So... Yeah, I think it's for everyone. So let's get back to that. So we got injured. Mm. How do we get injured? We had surgery. Tell me about that. I think I remember the day my husband and I were clearing um, some land behind our new house. And I was always out there because, uh, you know me, I feel like I'm tough. I could do it. So I was dragging the tarp across the yard and my back popped. And I was like, ooh, this isn't good. So I was in the house lying on the couch and it just wasn't getting better. It got to the point that I was getting imaging done and the imagery was not showing the ruptured disc. The imagery wasn't showing that the ruptured disc moved and it caught the ligament between the discs. So it wasn't showing that and it, so it wasn't explaining why I couldn't walk. Um, they they were, think you were faking. Yeah, you just, thank you. You just got me back on track. They thought I was faking. So I never even talked to you about this. People were We've giving never me talked, books. We've never, talked, We've never even talked this. about this, but this is crazy. People were giving me books and the book was mind over back pain. And I bought the book and I was like, okay, I'll give it a shot. It was basically telling me that I'm making it all up in my mind. I do not have a back injury because the, the imagery was not showing how severe it was. It was so bad. I was in town. I would be in town in the grocery store with two young children, and I would sit on the bottom shelf of the grocery store and put my hands over my eyes because I didn't want people to see that I was a crazy woman that had to sit on the floor because I couldn't walk. And I, how long did this go on for? About three years. Oh wow! Yes. The worst was in Disney World. I was climbed into the giant stroller that you would get for the kids because I was no way was I going to let my husband go get me the wheelchair. So I climbed into the stroller that the kids had and people kept coming up to us and giving me advice. And my husband was like, if one more person comes over to us and tries to give us advice, it was terrible. My husband is an awesome guy because a year after I had back surgery, we did it again. <laughs> we went right back to Disney and did the whole thing again, which was great. But I went in for surgery after having, um, I was at my chiropractor for years, um, physical therapy, neuromuscular. I was getting the shots. The Was there anything helping? The shots would help. But I do remember one day I went to New York City with the kids and my sister-in-law and the shop stopped working and I was like in Central Park. I couldn't get out of Central Park. <laughs> I was sitting on every bench and it was hard to explain to the kids and said, I can't walk. Right. So when I finally had surgery, I went to a neurosurgeon and now at what point did they did they ever see the imaging? The imaging ever eventually not until he opened me okay, up. Okay, so that's what it was. So after the surgery was supposed to take like an hour, it took like three, and he went out and told my husband, Well, we got to the bottom of it because 
her ligament was being crushed between the discs. So we removed the ligament and we carved the disc down. So I'm missing the ligament in my low back. So every once in a while, things will go askew. You've seen me in class. I'm like crooked. I'm like, Mark, help me, help me out here. Uh, but, you know, I pretty much know what to like avoid. And I'm just happy to be able to not walk in pain. Right. So take me back to there. So how important then, well, let's back up a second. Going through the medical system, that's not a good experience because nobody believed you. No. Right. So how important is it to be like your own advocate to be like, hey, listen, like, yes, I know what you're saying. Mm -hmm. it, I don't, it's not in my head. Like I really have this yeah. pain. Because right? it wasn't, when people have a herniated disc that's so bad, you'll hear stories about people that lose control of their bladder. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure you have to deal with that a lot, which you have a lot of people coming in with back pains and you go into that situation. I didn't have that. I had a numb leg um, and I couldn't stand. I could sit, but I couldn't stand. Other people, they can't sit. So we didn't know until he literally opened me up. And I'm glad I went to a neurosurgeon. Uh, he's fantastic. And the shots were working. But once he did the surgery for me, it worked. The hardest thing was when he said to me, you can't run anymore. And I used to love to run. And I never had, I never had the confidence to ever run a race. Because I just was never a sports person. And then when he, after I had surgery, I was like, wow, I never did that. You know, I never ran a race. I never did any of that. My daughter, as you know, she was a superstar cross country. So I tell her, you know, back in the day, I could have made a butt. So do you think that, like, you'd, you'd already been doing yoga at that point, mm -hmm. right? Do you think that taking the running away pushed you further into exploring the yoga? Running was my meditation. Okay. And That's I didn't have that became. anymore. Yoga became my meditation. And so what would you say the main benefits of yoga have been into, in your life approaching like your 20th year or longer, right? You, you've been teaching for 20. Yeah. So you've been doing it for longer. Yeah. Right? Long so do you time. remember the Pam back then before yoga and now the Pam now? What the Step benefits aerobics, are? yeah. Kickboxing, running, um, all that crazy stuff. And so how has that changed you for now? Like what, what are the, if you had to give me like two main benefits of. And I was quick. Like I, I would be like short tempered. Okay. Um, agitated easily. Which is not you at all now. Really? Right? <laughs> <laughs> not, not, definitely not. Uh, that's my, well, if Emma listens, but that's my 22 year old. Um, so I feel like I've passed my anxiety onto her and she's slowly starting to understand yoga and she sees the benefits of it. But I see where I was looking at her at that age. Um, but it just it just took a long time. It took a lot of different yoga. It took meditation. I never thought I could sit down and meditate. I thought meditating was a matter of not thinking. I mean, yeah, in a way, but not really. You're, you meditate and you sit in your thoughts. And you notice your thoughts. You just don't react to them. And you just return to your breath. And if you do that long enough, and you get a little bit of that at the end of every yoga class when you're lying in Shavasana, because if you just lie there within yourself on the floor for just those three minutes to five minutes, things will start to move through your mind. I hate to admit that sometimes my best ideas for my art and stuff come in while I'm lying there or, or, or a sequence that I want to do in my next yoga class. But that's just normal because you've relaxed your body enough to relax into your thoughts and not just skip past them. So there's two things I want to say to that. So number one, when I was laying there today, I was like, I wish I had a notepad next to me, mm -hmm. right? So I could write the ideas as yep. I'm going through yoga. And I was like, people would think I'm weird. I was like, unless it's my yoga studio, then I could just do whatever I wanted. Right. Right. So I think when you are able to clear your head, that's when you download the inspiration of what you want to do. I've had a lot of great I revelations. I see students come to my class sometimes like. With a notebook? Yeah. I think some of them that oh. are in like yoga teacher training and stuff. Oh. They'll write stuff down in a mind. Nothing's ever mine. Like my my teacher, Raghunath, one thing he always taught me is like, it's not mine. I, I borrowed it from someone else. Right. So like part of what I did in my class today was a mixture of someone I followed from his wanderlust um, yoga um, fear that he was at. And I mixed it with my teacher, Raghunath. And then I mixed it with me. It's none of it was me. But it I was mean, none you. of it was them. It was me. But you're an artist, so you created or, all of that. Yes, right. which and, is the creativity. Yeah, and I think that um, 
that's the thing, right? So it's about taking from everybody, making it your own, and then expressing it. Mm -hmm. And I, that's what, probably what you do with, when you teach or with your art. Yeah. Um, the other thing I like about um, your classes as well is how you give different um, quotes, either at the beginning or end of class. And I, and I feel a lot of times they resonate with just how I live or, or what I'm doing. Oh, I love hearing that. Yeah. The, the quote that I've said to my students and on the podcast. What is it? Tell me. Progress, not perfection. Yes. All the time. All the time. I explain, love it. Explain what that means to you. Like if there's one thing I always think yeah. of, it's when I say that quote. What does that mean to you? It means just um, basically like I had a student today who was new and she came back. And I'm like, oh, my God, thank you so much for coming back. She was so sweet. But I told her, I said, you, just, you could just do here. And you're making, and I said that to her. I said, you're making progress. I said, just hold the pose in this way, and eventually you'll start to understand and be able to come up. And then I'm across the other side of the room with my best friend helping her. And I go over there to help her, and she just starts giggling. But it is, it's just making progress as well, because it's just walking in there and doing it. Sure. And then coming back. And then coming back. And that's how you create a habit. It's the right. habit. Yeah. Because um, everything has to be consistency. You can't just do yoga or kickboxing. Mm. Once or twice, it has to become part of your routine. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so when we talk about um, yoga is for everybody and every body, I think that's what encompasses the progress, not perfection, right? Because you, you can come in and like, even for me, like, yeah, I'm fit, but like, I can't twist. <laughs> right? yeah. like, oh I, I, don't twist I know, well. he doesn't, yeah. Um, and even some of Mark has his own way of doing his <laughs> twists. And because it's very fashionable. Yes, so. it's very fashionable. And because he's a professional, I just I don't go over there and correct him. I just kind of look over and I just kind of like, smile whatever like whatever you're you all set. Um, but but I find even like today, so uh, two things I want to say. I definitely think exercise <laughs> in yoga helps me not be reactive. Like you said, like you used to like you didn't say lash out, but like in the, mm, before, like mm. right. If I don't work out, I don't deal with stress as, as well as I do. And even today, for progress, not perfection, like a little bit of a cold. So I was like, hey, so here's, here's the thing, right? I just did the, the children's book. Love it. I appreciate that. <laughs> and uh, so there's a couple, there was a couple of er errors in it, like, like word things. And I thought they were fixed. <gasps> so we, we ordered more books. Mm -hmm. My friend's like, they didn't fix it. Oh, God, so, yeah. so that's, I got that like last night. So I wake up this morning. Now I'm already off because like, yeah, you're right. And it's the word grateful. And, and, oh. I, had, and I had a, so I didn't go it to the gym. It doesn't matter. I, I know. So I didn't, I didn't go to the gym and I'm like, progress, not perfection, right? But then I come to class and the lady's wearing a shirt that says grateful. I come in here, that thing over there says grateful. Yeah. Right? So I'm like, this is the universe. I like, it wrong. This is the universe like, like taunting me right now in a good way. But I was like, you know what? I know I still need to go to yoga because I need to make myself more level, right? I understand that. You need to take physical action to keep yourself level because you can't stay in your head all the time. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, that's why I just wasn't at Ross Simons anymore because every time I would send something to press, there'd be, be a mistake and I'd beat myself up over it. Right. And does it matter? No. No. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. In the long run, it yeah. doesn't. So when we talk about, like, there's many forms of yoga, just like mm -hmm. there's many forms of martial arts systems. Um, can you just tell me some of the ones that you're <laughs> more familiar with? So when we were talking about like that yoga is for everyone, uh, there is a class that's going on in the other room right now. And a few of my students were asking me, are you staying today? Are you staying today? I said, I'm not staying today. I'm doing this great podcast with Mark. But there's a class that you literally can just lie on the floor and you do movement with your breath in a way that is meditative and it puts you into rest and release. And it's called somatic yoga. That totally is for everyone, especially if someone has traumatic stress, if they have anxiety, anything, anything. Um, I have people in there that are going through chemo treatments, um, lying on the floor. It's, it's really yoga for everyone and anyone. The other one that I walked into and stumbled into not knowing anything about was kundalini. And kundalini yoga, you really, it's best if you don't know what it's about. You need to get in there and have the door locked. <laughs> The yogi yummy would like. Yeah. Yummy yoga. Yum, yes. Yummy. Yeah, <laughs> yummy would. 
And there's a lot of chanting and a lot of deep breath work and a lot of like real fast movements and the fast movements are in a way that it's going to move your breath so much that it exhilarates you and releases you from your thoughts. And then it slows you down. And then you can be lying on the floor with a gong playing. It's nap time. It is fantastic. And then there's other deep ones like yin. People will say yin yoga is for beginners. Yeah, it is. However, it is a very deep pose. Um, holding like a very low lunge, your hands might be on the floor, but you're holding it for a long time until your body just bit by bit goes in. Aerial yoga. With the, with the hammocks? Oh, yes. I was. I started teaching, um, well, I teach that as well, but I don't teach the kundalini, you know that, or the somatic. But the aerial yoga is um, with the hammocks hanging from the ceiling. And yes, I used to teach the flips and tricks and the whole circus Soleil thing. But a few years ago, I decided I just want to teach the restorative. So I'm more of, I just want to put my legs and my hips in the hammock and lay my shoulders on the floor and relax. And that's very yummy. Yummy yoga would, yummy yogi would like that. And what about, what about forest yoga? <laughs> forest is, yoga. Does it have been a forest? I feel like we're in a forest right now. You I know. know. I put you together a plant. Yeah, it, uh, forest yoga was the first yoga that I knew starting at Rafa. And I had done so much work with Anna Forrest, and she helped me so much because her... So it's called forest yoga because the lady who created it... Forest yoga, oh, because okay. Anna Forrest, yes. Okay, I'm thinking like the rainforest, but okay. Uh, so, yeah. so what's the difference of like forest yoga then? It's like a power yoga that holds the poses a lot more, okay. and it also goes a little bit deeper with um, releasing your body from maybe some past tension that you've held on to, that she's very good with that. You know my favorite form of yoga? What is that? Black light 80s rock yoga. <laughs> when Pam does special black light uh, yoga to 80s, uh, you know, Bon Jovi. You'll have to um, twist my arm to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great. Yeah. So let's say somebody, <clears throat> somebody wants to come in, they want to take control of their lives, they want to reduce stress, they don't know where to start, but they, they think yoga is the avenue. Mm -hmm. what, what kind of advice would you just kind of say to them? Like, where should they start? Could it be any form I mean, of yoga? If they want fitness, if they want more of a fitness class, but they want to start, I would start with a yoga stretch so you could start to understand the poses in a softer way and then move your way up. If you want yoga to just completely be something that's restful and release, I would take restorative. I'm going on a girl's um, uh, weekend this weekend, and we literally signed up in Groton, Connecticut for a restorative Two-hour restorative with Thai yoga assists. Oh, I'm so excited. So my boss is so awesome. Christine's letting me borrow bolsters from here to bring it so we can make it more yummy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, but the, yeah, so it depends on what you're looking for. If you've got a lot in your mind, if my mind is racing and the anxiety is really getting deep in me and I'm not going to be able to lie still and take a restorative class, I'll walk into Kundalini. Did you see during COVID... Uh, from your students, was the anxiety up? Could you tell? Can you talk to me a little bit about that? Because you still, when you could, you still kept teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, like the know. last day we closed up. Oh, my God. It was scary. Christine was in Bali. And she got a call from us saying that everything has taken a turn for the worst. And the state, the government is shutting us down. So she was stuck there. For, God, I can't even remember how long she was stuck there. I mean, there could be worse places to be stuck. Yes, yes, yes. So we had to shut the whole place down and whatnot. But um, before we did, we were in the room teaching, not leaving the stage area, staying away from people, um, trying to wipe everything down. It was very nerve wracking. And then it just happened quick. It did happen quick. It just went down. So my students were reaching out to me and they were having a lot of anxiety being at home. And this was so unlike me to put myself out there. You do it all the time. I don't know how you do it. But I literally just set the phone up in the back area of my family room in my house. And I started to teach yoga and putting it on YouTube. And I was so embarrassed. I thought my kids are going to be like, oh my God, my mom, what is she doing? My, my friends are going to see this. So I did that, and I, they were very, very thankful that I did that. And after that continued for a while, Zoom became popular. So we all taught ourselves how to Zoom yoga, and we started to do the yoga Zoom through Rafa. 
And everyone was really thankful to have that. And I'm glad that I did the YouTube one first because some of my students that at that point could not afford to do the Zoom yoga classes with Rafa because they'd been laid off from work and they're waiting for money to come in and they really needed it. And they were actually just going back and doing my classes I did on um, YouTube. This is going to be an interesting question because I want to really see what you think about this. But do you think of yourself as like an authority, like someone that people look up to? No. Because they do. No, they don't. Yeah, 100% they do. Yeah, 100%. Like, uh, yeah, you know, just like Pam. Pam's my yoga. Yeah, they do. So it's like my yoga instructor. Like people have like deep respect for you. I I don't know if you always see that, but like that's why people were reaching out to you because like, a lot of times when you're in the forest, no pun intended, hmm. like you don't see everything that's going on, but like people come for you because inspiration, like it's yoga, right? But it's mm-hmm. also your personality, and how you care about them and how you interact with them. So when people are anxious, they need to latch on to different things. I remember we had a couple conversations through uh, Facebook or whatever, like just kind of talking, which was good for me to mm-hmm. kind of see what people were doing over here, you know, to, to relate to my yeah, business. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> I remember that. Um, but no, people definitely see that, see you like that, but I don't think... I think one of the most endearing things about you is you don't see that about yourself where like you are the authority figure. Like I told you multiple so times, funny. like, yeah. It's like, a, but everything I say is not mine. And I was, I was listening to, but does it have to be? No, it doesn't. Um, I was listening to a podcast. I'm very much into all these podcasts now. So how many I, of mine have you listened to? Oh, I'm getting there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Right now I'm hooked on, um, Mel Robbins. And um, she's a five-second rule woman. Okay. Oh, God, I love it. So I, I, I'll I, go into these prompts where I don't have any energy for anything. So you have to say to yourself, five, four, three, two, one, like a rocket. <laughs> Up, go, do it. Get this painting done. Do this, do that. Get all this done. Get ready for Mark, all that. But it was another podcast I was listening to the other day. And someone, the, wor- the woman that was doing the podcast, it might have been Mel. She said, uh, thank you for everything that you tell me. Um, and they, and then that person said, no, thank you for what you say, because none of it belongs to us. It's all inspiration that people pass along to each other. So just, you know, it's, it's, it's not my words, like how I close my class every day. It's not my words. It's words that I found that just kind of, or how I today purpose. God, that's a tough question. That's a whole different podcast. You need to do a podcast on purpose. So we, well, you can't even get into what purpose is. So, so, and I was going to ask you this too when, when you brought that up. Um, so if you had to put your purpose in, into one or two sentences, and I know you said, I heard you in class, you're like, I don't know what mine is, but what would it be? I mean, at the moment, at the moment, I'm trying to do more of what inspires me. Um, my purpose is to do things that bring joy to my, my life. And that's not just for me, but for my friends, I'm going to go meet my girlfriend a little bit for lunch. Um, when I do a painting, which is hysterical that we talked about this before, I didn't know stick people were going to be that popular that I'm on my 11th commission painting stick people at a beach doing shenanigans, but I painted it because it made me happy. And I even remember the day I showed my mother the painting, I thought she was going to say, what are you doing? She's 82 years old. She laughed so hard. And she's like, this is the best thing I've ever seen. So I'm just trying to do things that make me happy. Like I said today in class, you know, I was reaching to get dressed. I could put my jeans on, but I chose to put my butterfly pants on. That's more fun. It's more fun. So I don't know what my purpose is. Right now, my purpose is just to feel good. Well, you said something interesting in class, which is very what true. What did I say? So you were saying, uh, I think it was geared mostly to women. And, and you were like, your purpose is actually, it was something like Oh, not like, your children. Not your children. Not your children. And I was like, she doesn't know how exactly right she is. Really? Because, and I, was I almost like, wanted to take that back after I said it. I'm like, you, oh, Emma, I'm sorry. So and, Emma <clears> thinks <throat> my whole life is her purpose. <laughs> well, as she should. So the reason I say that is that when you said that, I was like, hmm, I wonder if that offended anyone. But it's absolutely true. It's and sometimes true. the truth offends people because I have these meetings with people who overweight, depressed, right? Like not doing the right thing. They come to me, they want to lose weight. And I'm like, hey, Pam. So like, listen, I have, I have these conversations with, mm-hmm. with most women. Do you feel like you're taking care of everyone else first but yourself? I was a caregiver came into my mind. Yes. 
And I'll Immediately. And I'll tell you what happens with the caregiver in a second, from my experience. Yeah, same. And they're like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, Pam, so listen, like, we can't pour from an empty cup. No. Right? No. And they're like, yeah, well, I just feel guilty. Like, okay, cool. So, like, who's, like, the primary caregiver of your children? Me. Mm-hmm. Okay, Pam, so, like, what happens if you have a heart attack? What happens if you die? Mm-hmm. Who's going to take care of your kids? Right? Now puts it in perspective because if you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of, you can't be the best mom, you can't be the best, Absolutely. yeah. Like, people don't, people have been trained out of that. Like Sammy has a, a four-year-old, and if she doesn't take care of herself, how is she going to take care of them? I have another friend that we had this conversation, that's why I'm dragging her to class. You need to take care of yourself, and that way you're a better person for everyone else. I had a meeting with a, a former client. She came back. <clears throat> I know that when someone really stops working out of my studio, and they didn't reach their goal, but they did, they're halfway there. Three, I know the trajectory, mm-hmm. right? They're going to gain the weight back. I hope they're in the anomaly, but they're probably not going to be. They do, yeah. So she, it's been a year. She comes back. She gained 60 pounds in a year. And I remember when she left, she would even take her laptop to like the kickboxing class and put it on the side. And so I was like, hey, what happened in the year? She's like, I work too much. Okay. So what's the decision point where like now you need to change because you need to come talk to me. Right. And people, I was like, how long did it take you to come talk to me? She's like, you know, a little bit. Me and my mom talked about it. Right. Cause like they're embarrassed to come back. I'm just here to help you. Right. right. But we have to be honest with each other. And I was like, listen, like that job that you have, that you're working 80, 90 hours, they'll fire you in a second and get somebody else. Yes. So in all that money that you made working, you are going to spend fixing your health later on. That's why I have this conversation with my, right? son, my husband's twin sister. Cause she's got a really beautiful, awesome job in New York City, and she has uh, two young children. But she works so much that she doesn't take time to, like, eat her lunch and to take care of herself and to rejuvenate herself. So I'm always trying to, yeah, it's, you can't pour from an empty cup. You and can't. so I, I, was actually, I was actually, like, smiling to myself when you said that in class because I was like, that is exactly what you have to take care of yourself first, right? You put the oxygen mask on yourself first, then you can put it on somebody else. So, and, and, and that's, well, and that's Jess, your purpose. Like, Jess was uh, texting me. She was five minutes late because, so cute. It was her four-year-old's birthday. So she was taking pictures of her four-year-old, took care of that, and then she ran to yeah. yoga. And then we were talking um, afterwards, and she said, I only have this Thursday to do this. So I was a little, couple of minutes late. I hope you don't mind. I'm like, no, of course not. She goes, and for some reason, my spot is always still available. Do you ever notice that when she walks in? It's true, right? She walks in, her spot is always open waiting for her. This was like the first time in like seven years where my spot was filled <laughs> before <laughs> I got here. Um, okay, so what do you believe somebody has to be or have to be centered? Now, one of the best, oh. one of the best things... Uh, I talked to my daughter about that one yesterday. All right, tell me. So I was like, hmm. So can I, I'll say, I'll give Emma the, um, I'll say, Emma. How would you answer this? And she goes, are you on a podcast now? I said, no, 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 I'm answering the question. And I thought it was really interesting because she did answer it correctly. She said, when you feel that you have support from others. And that just like hit me that my 22 year old said that. And if then if you don't feel that, then you need to remind yourself that you feel worthy and that you're able. Shout out to Emma, right? That's right? that's great. Yeah, I was I, shocked. And she just said it right off. Just getting snacks out of the cabinet. Oh, point of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that um, you know, it's about being centered in the moment and and mm-hmm. and things in life. We all chose to come here, so things in life are supposed to knock you off your center, so you can learn. Yeah. Right. Because if you were always centered, you would have never done yoga. Yeah. Right. You would have never had this journey. Like, but it doesn't mean that those like things have to support. derail you. Right. Like when I when I started my art, it's like I had I felt centered in my spot and felt grounded because I had and I I believed in myself because I had a support system. Right. Yeah. So just like uh, I didn't believe in myself at first. I didn't believe in myself with yoga at first. So And kind of like when the book I wrote, right? So Pug right. doesn't believe in himself because his teacher said he couldn't do it, but his mom talks to him and says, like, yes. you can do this because I already yeah. believe in you. Yes. And then he starts believing, right? Yes. So, I, And I think that's why it's important to surround yourself with people who inspire you, who, 
who are better than you in some ways, but also support you. <clears throat> There's that story about, um, you ever heard a story about like crabs in a bucket? No, I, okay. I know a lot of these stories from Raganoff, like the Indian stories like that. Tell me about the crabs in the bucket. So basically when, when, when you put crabs in a bucket, you don't have to put a lid on the bucket okay. because when one crab starts to crawl out of the bucket, the other crabs pull him back down, right? So they never let the crab actually get out of the bucket. Yeah. <clears throat> so you don't want to be around crabs. You'd rather be around yogis or people who inspire you or, yeah. or, or you know, supportive people like that. Is there, is there a story that... Um, I'll, I'll this is now make, a podcast of three. Sure. Yeah, but that's a podcast, a podcast of three. <laughs> podcast five. I don't remember the exact whole story, but I do remember it's basically of the um, the monkey putting his hand into the bucket for the peanuts, and he won't let go, and he can't let go, and he's trying to get his fist out, but he doesn't realize he needs to let go of the peanuts. To take his arm out he needs to learn to just let go of it but there's more to the story than that but i think that's that's a a, a great point um you know i, I need to <clears throat> there's certain things in life where you need to let go of them so they can mm -hmm. fix themselves yeah right um and then move on and mm -hmm. and i feel like so this this is one of the things where you know People get on me a couple times because they'll say something to me and I won't put any, like, I won't respond to it. I won't put any energy into it because it'll be like something I perceive to be negative or, or negative for them. And I'm like, all right. And they're like, well, I know you don't want to hear this, but like, yeah, well, I, it's not, I'm fine. Like, it's your, it's your dilemma. But like, if I add to this, we are going to make these flames go higher, right? right? And it's right. Gonna, you're going to have more attention on this. So by me just ignoring it. It, it takes the vibration yes. down and you can go on, right? You ever been, you ever been doing something where like you're so worked up in it and then like you're getting frustrated, you're agitated. Mm -hmm. Like if you let it go for a little bit, a day, a couple of days, and then you come back to it, it's easier, right? Right. Like I was, I was talking to a friend of mine um, and our, our kids. Um, so we're back again. So basically what happened is I was trying out some new stuff. And I got home, looked at the footage, everything was great. Around the 40 minute mark, everything just went silent, right? So now you have this knee jerk reaction of like, oh man, right? I just, it's messed up. Or I had to really talk myself out of like having that negative reaction to it, right? Because at first, for the first maybe five, 10 minutes, I was like, oh man, like we messed up, I gotta redo it. And I was like, all right, kind of stay calm, right? Because there's two choices. I can look at this negatively or I look at this positively and we could, I messaged you, we could do it again, we could add some more stuff, because I knew even at the end of the podcast last time, we, we talked about some great stuff, right? Mm. But now I was like, well, this can give me an opportunity to make it even better. So I always think you have that, like, two options, either that positive or negative. It also goes down to, like, progress, not perfection, mm -hmm. right? So then I, I remember from my, my metaphysical studies that, like, like, life, things that happen are inherently meaningless, which means you give it the meaning. So I could have assigned that a meeting that was like negative, like I'm not good at this, stuff like that. Or I could have that positive meaning, like we're going to make it even better, mm -hmm. right? So the other thing that happened was <clears throat> you have that negative self-talk, right? Now we've, we, this is the first time we really talked, but we know each other for a while and we like each other's energy. We like each other. But in my head, I was like, oh, Pam's going to think I stink at this. Like she's going to think I'm an amateur, stuff like that. And then I was like, that's that negative self-talk that comes up that I think as humans, we all kind of have. But then I had to be like, stop that. Like, I didn't make the microphones that stopped working, right? Like, everything on my end, I, I did correctly. I was happy then I get to talk to you again. Well, and, the, and, that's the, and that's the positivity of it. But do you get that negative self-talk, like, in yourself? All the time. Yeah? And um, so how do you... <laughs> what do you tell yourself when that happens? Oh, God. Um, what do I tell myself? I... Because we can either buy I, into it or we can push it away, break I've up been with it. Yeah, I've been working on a lot with what I say in class. I try to remove myself from the negative talk, which is really hard to do. So sometimes I will put that negative talk out into my group um, text message with my best friends. And then they'll put me back on track. Like, that's not true. And, and it's so true so that 
so true, not true, <laughs> but a lot of your thoughts in your mind, about 90% of your thoughts in your mind are negative thoughts about yourself and they're not true. They're, tr they're thoughts that are not true. So there's someone that I, um, I followed that told me when listening to podcasts and, and watching YouTube videos, try to make anything that's negative very unfamiliar in your mind and try to make what's positive very familiar in your mind. So I try to do that. And I think that goes back to you can either make it a negative experience or a positive experience just on the meaning you assign it. Right. right. I'll try to learn something from the negative experience. And so for me, I, I looked at it and I was like, okay, like, let me not use the wireless mics, but I have a recorder mm -hmm. now. Right. So we have two, two ways of doing it. Um, I think it's also easier if you train yourself to like when that negative thought first comes in to push it out right away. So it doesn't gain momentum. Yes. Right. Cause sometimes we have those days, at least for oh, me. Oh, it can gain momentum. Yeah. Right. It'll feed on you and feed on you and. And a lot of times, especially I'm like, cause there's a lot of people that rely on me for the studio, you know, employees, stuff like that. And I was like, if I can't get myself out of this rut, it's only me I affect. It's, mm -hmm. it's everybody else. It literally just happened to me the other day. I, um, I don't want to get into it. It was an embarrassing moment for me, but I uh, posted something on Facebook and it was, I bought something in a store and it had a saying on it. And someone messaged, someone wrote in the feed, and then I immediately messaged that person and apologized and deleted it. I said, wow, you know, I didn't look at it that way. And I was, like, being silly and funny and being um, lighthearted, but I didn't look at it the way that person was looking at it. So I got so beat up on myself that I didn't sleep that night. And then the next morning, I finally put it into words and put it out to my friends. And they said, Pam, that's not true. You are a kind, caring person. And that's why you're upset about this, because you did not mean to do that. We all make mistakes. And I'm going to challenge you on that. Maybe you didn't make a mistake, right? Because I do things the same way, right? And I know when I make art or I do stuff, like if I make myself laugh, that's all that matters, mm -hmm. right? And then the people who are attracted to that will be attracted to we that. All have, we all have opinions. Right? My girlfriend said something that's really awesome. This is really great. We all have opinions like we all <laughs> assholes. Yeah. I, now, I told you this was a clean podcast. Oh Remember I God. told you that? She's playing swears <laughs> in the yoga thing. I'm trying to be zen. I want to like punch people. <laughs> My e explicit music today. <laughs> but I think I think that's a good point though, right? Because like, yeah, so okay, friend, you can have that opinion. That's not my opinion. Right. Um, if that offended you, no. Like I'm you could be like, I'm sorry, yeah, but like that's on God. you. That's on you, right? I, oh, I try. I'm too. My daughter's the same yeah. way. I'm too empathetic. Yeah, that's cool. Like, like it's, because like I do it's the, my superpower. And that and and that's why people love you. But like I. You know, I'll do like the creepy Cranstonian videos or I'll do like silly videos like that. And some people are like, what is he doing? Yeah. But then other people join my studio because of that. Oh my God, you make me laugh. Yeah. That's why I had to have you send the video because I needed my girlfriend, Caroline, who was there again today. We literally did not even meet last week for a cup of coffee during the day. We met for a drink at three in the afternoon. Right. And I was messaging you from the bar. Okay, that's nice. <laughs> being crazy moms ordering a drink and I was like you need to send me that video right now and we were in Rasa the place was empty because it was three in the afternoon so we literally put the sound up and we were laughing our which video off. was it again oh the yummy yoga yes yeah and so like you know but that's I think that's the important part of like being on your own path mm -hmm. and not everybody's gonna be on the path with you I tell my employees all the time we're a train I'm a train people will get on the train and people can get off the train whenever they want but the train's gonna keep going yeah. Right. So I think like like a creative person, if you're trying to be funny, whatever. Listen, if that offended you, Music. like literally, that's on you. That's not on me. Right. I didn't. I, my intention was not to offend anybody. You know what well, I'm saying? So I feel like we can't buy into that. On Tuesday, I played, unfortunately, the bomb intro song, and I did not play the non-explicit one. Oh, like today? So it starts and it goes, da, 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 blink, blinkers. And I was like, oh my God, bad yoga teacher. But the whole class started laughing so hard. Yeah, because I know that's not you. It's not. Right? I have I have so many. You've been to my class for so many years. I have so many non-explicit. I, I look for the ones that are bleeped, bleeped out. Yeah, but, but they also know who you are. And I, yeah. I think that's really important to stay true to who you are and don't let people influence you to be like, okay, 
whatever you said, but I'm doing me, right? right I think that right. I think that's important. So for me, I get centered most around people and I get supercharged when people tell me how much they help me or they come up to me like one lady just started um and she's like I lost eight pounds in like one mm. week right and she has to lose she, wow in right, one, one week? week yeah because you start eating right stuff like that um because we're all in this together and there's times where we all need to be picked up the floor myself included right so do you think like having a community like Rafa Mm-hmm. helps you stay centered, helps the members stay centered. Because I, f- I feel like a lot of people don't have that community. I do from my studio, right, which has gotten through me through a lot of things, including many breakups, mm-hmm. right? There's always people around me. How important do you feel that that community is in your life and for the members of Rafa? Oh, I think it's it's huge. I mean, I just uh, – everyone knows each other and – and if there's new people in class, Christine does in her class too. I have them introduce themselves to each other, say hello. Because we're all different, but we're all alike in so many ways. And yeah, I mean, I don't. But for you personally, you're the teacher. Mm-hmm. Right now, I have written down here and I didn't know how I'd fit it in. But one of the things I love most about your class is you make people look at each other and smile and say hello. Yeah. Right? I think that's just a small, such a small thing that. Leap bounds, mm-hmm. right? Because like some people, especially when you're new, like I don't really want to look at this person because we're so close and like they oh might. Oh my god, yes, yes. You know, but um, <clears throat> my girlfriend said to me, she's like, when I come back to class next week, I can't be next to this girl that was next to me because she's so perfect. And I was like, that's not the case. I said you could actually learn to see her poses. Because when I go over to adjust her, you were near her today. She just starts giggling because I've known her for thirty something years. So. Um, yeah, it's just, every, right. everybody is welcome and it's all, does that answer your question? Kind of yeah, I, I think the, so the thing is like, as a, as an instructor, like, does it center you to have these people come to you and, and be like, you know, you helped me do this or like you gave me that inspiration, right? Cause we oh talked God. last time about yeah. like how you are that role model for people. I've never even realized that the first one that started to come to me was Paul with his ballroom dancing. Love Paul. Yeah. Love everybody loves Paul. Such a gentleman. Definition of gentleman. Uh, That's why the, I wear cotton shorts, by the way, because Paul does. Yeah. And I, and I was like, oh, I guess I wear cotton shorts. Why not? Yeah, right? Yeah. You always have the cotton shorts outfit. And it doesn't matter. You don't have to have your Lululemon on. So he was like, wow, this has really helped my ballroom dancing. And then I had um, golf pros come. And it was like, wow, you don't understand like how much this has really helped my golf, my golf game. And when they say that to you, how does that make you feel? Oh, so good. So good. And then to have our new friend, Michael, who is a physical therapist and is a golf pro physical therapist, saying to me that he, same thing, he likes to take some of the things that I do and he's hoping that he can incorporate and bring me into um, his program a little bit. We'll talk to him about that. But it's it's interesting because I've just been doing what makes me happy. I'm just doing what makes me happy and keeping me healthy and keeping my attitude and and keeping my energy up. And it's affecting others in ways that I never, ever thought it would. Because vibration is contagious. It right? Whether it's completely. whether it's negative or whether, whether it's but if it's positive Mm -hmm. Um, and that gives me a great mindset into, into like what I wanted to say. So I started yoga after I was a physical therapist and there were like three main things that I learned. And I was, I was already a fitness coach. I was already a martial artist, physical therapist, but I learned how important the, the flowing of your body is like the body flow. And it doesn't even matter what you're doing. But with the hot room included, but just moving your body, bending it. It really doesn't matter what you're doing as long as you're, you're breathing. Moving. The Really the importance of movement, right? Yeah, because you're breathing. The second thing is the breathing, right? Now, I don't mm-hmm. say I'm perfect at that, but just the ability to slow yourself down and breathe, especially if you're in like chronic pain or you have a lot of pain, mm-hmm. right? Because you're going to be breathing differently if you're in pain. So to take a moment and actually breathe deeply, um, also like men who are like muscular, you, you chest breathe a lot. Like you don't breathe. Yes. I remember and we, were in, we were in class in PT school and the instructor used me as a demo to like diaphragmatic breathe like from here. And like I would joke around a lot. I couldn't do it. Like I legit couldn't do it. And she thought I was like, you know, I was like, I literally, she's like, Mark, come on. I was like, I can't do it because I just yeah. use my chest. But like 
coming here, like learning, learning to breathe. And then the other one was like, for me, learning how to stretch the side bodies. Cause a lot of the stuff we do in PT, you have like functional stuff, but you, when your stretches are almost like linear, like you're not holding poses like this with people. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, that's where my tightness is. So the three things about just move, right? Number one, number two, breathe. And three, how to like go in positions that we not really wouldn't do in life, like your side angle position or, mm-hmm. or different things like that. I thought that was and incredibly helpful for me. And using your core. And you're moving everything from the center using your core. You're not just going in there and just relaxing. Like you've got to go in there with purpose, use your core, stretch that side area. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's so much more complicated than people think. Yeah, but you can simplify it, someone like you. Try to. And that's why I think like... A natural transition would be somebody going to physical therapy and then going right into a yoga class that can be modified for them, especially because I worked with a lot of chronic pain patients like you Mm -hmm. were, like you had surgery, Mm -hmm. right? And look at you now. So Mm -hmm. physical therapy will take you so far, especially because insurances will cap it, right? I'll tell you, insurances don't care if you get totally well. No. Right? They'll just be like, okay, you got 10 visits, you had back surgery, you got 10 visits, you're good, or whatever, and... You're almost left to your own devices. You don't know where to go. But if there was a natural transition into a yoga thing that was modified for them, mm-hmm. okay, PT took you so far. Now we go here. Now they start seeing the benefits. And they also start learning how to live a healthy lifestyle, right? Yes. Now, yes. as a chronic, as someone who had surgery, that's kind of the model that you did, right? Yes. Yes. It was um, – I had – and I really had to stop. I had to stop with the kickboxing and the step aerobics and and I couldn't run. So I found yoga and it just completely released my whole nervous system because you're moving with your breath. Because people forget that yoga actually is a lot of philosophy, the way you live your life. It's about breathing. It's connection. Um, connection in a way that you feel like you're a part of something bigger than you. It, and just having that, it could really just kind of center someone. And, and again, we get back to the community. Yeah. Right? So if you like, like I mean, I talked to three or four different people when I walked This is that. an amazing community. Right? I mean, I've been, like I said earlier, um, that I went to my class at Rafa all those years ago, and I never left. Um, I went, I've been to many studios all over. If I travel, I'll go somewhere. If I go to New York City, I'll go somewhere. There's nothing that compares to the studio. I I landed in the right place and with the right person all those years ago, and it's it's amazing. It's amazing everything that we offer. We have um, classes where we'll have patients that have MS coming in, um, patients that are um, coming in, and, and, and Christine is just, oh my God, so wonderful with them. We try to always offer for the community, and there's so many classes like that somatics movement class. It's really for everybody. When so I try to tell someone about the class, they're like, oh no, I can't do yoga. I can't get up. I can't get down. Like, no, it's like I tell my mom, no, you just got to go and like lay down on the floor, and, and it's all breath, and it's movement in your body. So it releases your nervous system so you go into rest and digest. Versus fight or flight. Yes. Right? We're all in, we're always in fight or flight. And I think that's what helps people like kind of kind of calm down um, in that aspect. Um, okay, so we talked about this last time, but this got cut off. So you all have right. a new passion. Painting. Tell me about it. During the pandemic, well, I always painted. I mean, my grandparents, my, my grandfather, my great-grandfather were artists, and I was always creative and an artist, so to say, when I was a kid. Went to art school, went to my, my master's in art. My mother was like, what is she doing? And then I, you know, I worked down the street for um, Ross Simons. I was an assistant art director. I left work, and I so I wanted to always try to keep – up with a little bit. And I wonder if I just said some of that in the earlier podcast. So if I did, you know, we are going back and forth. It's okay. So with the painting, I always had like a box of stuff. Um, and I bring out my box of paints and, and paint here and there. But in the pandemic, when we were in lockdown, we we're all going crazy. I mean, we were all, we were, we were making our own bread. We were creating our own yeast because we couldn't find yeast. So I, I was losing my mind. I started to paint. So in between constantly cooking for the family, I was painting and I cleared off my entire area in that side of the house where I used to have my design area where I would do um, freelance work. 
And I set it up as a painting studio and I painted every day. I painted every day. And some days I'd be like, oh, this is terrible. I throw it. I just keep going. So it was just like that persistence and progress and keep going. And then finally I had the courage to show some work on social media. But oh no, I wasn't going to show it on my page. Because so you were I, nervous about it. Yeah. Because of that nervous. negative self talk. Negative self talk. So I created another Instagram page thinking that they'll oh, well, find me, which <laughs> you were giggling like, no, they could find you still that way. <laughs> It's like so, Pam's art gallery, like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so I created that. I started to get some great responses, which is amazing. And then I was like, all right, well, I'll put a few things on Etsy. Started to sell stuff on Etsy. I started to sell stuff off my stories of um, social media. And I was like, all right, I'll, I'll put some work in a show. I got into a show. All right, I'll put some more. Oh, I got into another show. Oh, look, my work was actually sold at this show. And someone told me, do you know who bought your work? And I'm like, no. Like, well, you know, he's a big shot with Raytheon. And he's uh, sending your two paintings that he just purchased to the Bahamas. I was like, what? And then other people were coming up to me at the show. But I wanted that painting. So I did a commission. So one of those paintings was that of stick people doing, it's called beach shenanigans. And it's stick people doing crazy stuff on the beach. Um, the one I just mostly did, I'm like, make myself laugh. I have to find something every time I do it because I'm on my 11th painting, my 11th one of commission, like a little stick person dragging someone down the beach. I, I heard put, you had a new addition. I have a new addition. Yeah. I, I put Mark in it. I put a little spiky hair going up. And, and it's really difficult, you know, to put to little put biceps. To put biceps well, on we don't want to say little biceps. They, could they be, were big. They could be very big. Very big yeah, biceps. Very big biceps. Yeah. And, I, and I got you holding a, a dumbbell. I love it person on the ground doing sit-ups oh yeah then went over there we've got we've got yoga with my girlfriend with her crazy pink hair my first yoga instructor that I ever had and so we talked about this last time when I think I, I said when I heard John Bon Jovi say this so when you create something in his case a song or in my case a video or, or a book but he does videos you want to share it with people mm -hmm. right now in my case if I make a video or a book the video you can just share books I can order multiple copies when you do a painting, it's like a one of one. So I had asked you, like, is it like bittersweet to, to send off the painting? Because when you create something, like it's you, it's from you. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you want to sell it, but like you lost mm -hmm. it. So so what did you then do to overcome that? Well, I was really upset that I sold this beautiful painting for the most I've ever sold. Which so it wasn't about the money. It was about like mm -hmm. the... The love and the creativity. And I was like, oh, my, my girlfriend's like, but let's go into someone's house in the Bahamas. And I was like, I know, but I was so in love with that painting. And then it was supposed to actually be in a show that's coming up. So then I had to do another one. And I fell in love with that one. And then I did another one. I'm like, I fell in love with that one. And that one is um, a woman diving off a cliff and it's hanging up um, high on the wall in Ohanga. I'll just go in there. I'll go in there a little later on just to look at it because... It's my favorite. And you told me then that you put the same characters in the next painting. Yes, in the right? stick, figures, <coughs> the in stick, the stick figures figure in the painting, next, yes. There'll be like a little red Vespa, and then there'll be a little person's having hanky-panky next to it. And then and then I'll have another one, um, a bride and a groom. And then I have um, you there. You'll be in there again. And um, the wedding couple. I have a little sh a shark chasing swimmers. But then I was like, oh, that's. That's kind of boring. Now I've done that so many times. So now you I could just it. have the shark eat the stick. Well, like, yes, I just did. like lines in the ocean. You know, like legs. Yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. You're welcome. Well, because I have a little head with the arms going ah, and a little mouth screaming, and the yeah. shark next to it. You I'm should have put, like a, a dissected stick figure. No like blood, though, but no I'll blood. just put the, yeah, just put the little, little leg floating away. Everything <laughs> you do is PG. <laughs> uh, yes. So. What do you want to say to somebody who's watching this? Mm -hmm. Maybe they're in chronic pain. Maybe they want to change their life. Um, maybe they know they're not where they want to be, but they they want to change. They have the desire to change. Mm. As a yoga instructor, as somebody who went through back surgery, mm -hmm. um, as a you know soon to be famous stick figure artist, mm -hmm. what, what do you tell mm -hmm. them? Like how do they how do they start changing their life? Well, let your feet land on the floor and take off and say to yourself, self talk. 
Um, this was, every time I say this at home, my husband smiles because this came from someone that he knew that you're going to have the, you know, I, we would ask this person, he's passed and we'll never forget him. Like, how you doing? Having the best day ever. I say that to you a lot, right? I'm best day ever. And that's just all in the way in your attitude. And then another thing I've been working on lately is I have been getting very lazy in the morning because my dog is old, which my our dogs, what they're like, mine's like the, the wife and his is the husband. They look like each other, our dogs. And I just have to bring my coffee back to bed because my dog is too tired to go down the stairs. So I'll get back in bed with my coffee. So then I say to myself, five, four, three, two, one, up, make yourself get up. Like, so a rocket, know, like, a saying, like a rocket. Like a rocket. Yes, the, the Rob, um, Mel Robbins said that she envisions a rocket. She's the five-second rule. So I've been doing that a lot. But really, you just got to let your feet hit the floor and just go. And if you need motivation to go to the gym, it's okay if you want to bring your girlfriends and go, but that's not going to work. Because you're too reliant on them. You can't rely on them. You gotta go on your own. You gotta walk in there by yourself. And I even do that at yoga classes and even in other states and whatnot. And the best thing is just kind of walk in by yourself and do it like you did years ago. And you years just ago. did it. Yeah. So, yeah. I think it's really about taking the first step. Yes. And but of course, having other people motivating you because if somebody is gonna bring you down, and if you have a group of people and you say, all right, well, are we gonna go to the gym today? And they're like, no, I don't wanna. Let's do it. They might bring you down. And you need to, so the, um, you need to like be able to get up. You need to be out. a self starter. Yes. And so what, you have to go five, four, three, two, one, rock. What's that? The the little the little crabby. Oh, the story about the crabs. Yeah, because it keeps them down. Yeah, and I think we I think we said on the last podcast, but that's basically like <clears throat> when someone crabology. It's crab. actually called crabology. <laughs> I looked thing? it up after that, and it is called crabology. Don't let other people pull you down. Yeah. So, and we're talking about basically when, when a lot of people are in the same, family does this. No, right? family so does So, I'm not saying my family specifically, my, but like from what are I heard. Are you taking time for yourself? Yeah. It's like Oh, selfish. you are so selfish. Right? But it's really about um, when somebody wants to change, you need to do it on mm-hmm. your own, at least to start, and find people who you who you want to be. Yes. I think I said um, at Joe Dispenza. I'm going to paraphrase this, but like, if you're not in love with your future, you keep reliving you your past. You are in charge of your future. You're in charge of who you want to be. Right. Because you create it. You create it. So the quote that you say at the end of each class, mm. can you end the podcast with a quote that you say? Okay. This is how you end every yoga class. Yeah. I was walking out of my um, teacher's uh, studio in upstate New York and his wife, uh, it's um, Raghun El Capo, his wife's beautiful woman she's a yoga teacher too and she had written on a chalkboard use your voice for kindness use your ears for compassion use your hands to help others use your mind for truth and use your heart for love so I just fell in love with that it's not mine it was passed on to me and it was passed on to her and now I pass it on to my students because every day that you put your feet on the floor it gives you an opportunity to start again so each day you start again, and you can start with vo- using your voice for kindness and your ears for compassion. Try to be like a better listener. Try to help people. Um, remind yourself that you have love within you so you could give it to others. And I think that's a great point. You have to love yourself first mm-hmm. before you can love others. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And if it comes down to it, like the world's really all about love. Because I think, well, I know that doesn't matter where you live, what color you are. We all want pretty much the same things. Yeah, yeah. To be we happy, want, to be loved. Want. Right? Right? <laughs> but yeah. And again, we are in all, all in this together, so it is important to... We crave it. We need it. Yeah. It is important to find those people that make you happy. Follow your passion. And mm-hmm. don't worry if someone inbox you because they don't like what you post. If it makes you happy, you post it again. <laughs> I would have posted mm-hmm. three times and tagged them. Yeah. <laughs> I'll share it with you after. <laughs> But uh, Pam, thank you, thank you for this. I, I enjoyed right. this, um, and thank you for being so kind for doing this again oh my with God. me. And I'm all sweaty. So. Well, then they, they can see us in our normal garb. In our normal garb. <laughs> thank you, Pam. In my home, my own sweet home, Rafa <laughs> Yoga. That was great.
Welcome to Yummy's Yoga. I'm Yummy, but you already know that. Megan. What the that? Megan, please. It's my animal, Paul. You, uh, you do know that we only use the finest faux fur here. What is this? My yoga mat. No, this is. Please, replace that. It's from Canada. Now that you are ready, we are going to go into a dirty pigeon. Please. Oh, let the yum lead you. It's like this. Dirty. Now, we will go into a downward doggy position, please. More on the mat, please. You don't want to insult the Canadians. Now, lift your leg. Good. A little bit higher. I can't. I will help you. Please do not touch or talk to Tony. Good. Now just a little bit higher. Can you go any higher? No. Let me help you. How does this feel? I have many emotions. Okay. That's good. You want to feel with yummy. Or you can feel yummy. But let's go a little bit higher now for the last one. There we go. Let yummy help you. Yummy will guide you. A little bit higher. As high as I can go. Now we will go into Cobra. Yes, that looks nice. Hello, my name is Dr. Mark Bachner. Don't forget to check out my new book, Pug Learns to Believe. Hey guys, Dr. Mark here. Now I know a lot of you want to know how we get all these amazing results with our clients, and it comes down to three things. The first, is fun fitness classes that burn a lot of calories. Two is giving you an accountability coach to make sure you stay on track and get the best results. And three is the nutrition. Included in the nutrition is our food supplement. So we pair with Prestige Labs because I feel they are the best, they have integrity, and they get great results. These are actually the supplements that I take as well. Here's the awesome part. By clicking the link below, you can save 40% off the retail price. So you need that link to actually save 40%. If you just go to the normal site without my link, you're paying full price, okay? So these are the supplements my clients use. If you are interested, definitely click the link below and it'll tell you all about them.